Nobody like you, Jesus, your God. You are God. And there is nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus, your God. You There is nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Your God. Help me, somebody. You are God. That's all to it. There is nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Your God. Come on, help me, y'all. That's it. You are God. Come on. There is nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Your God. Come on, all the band members. Everybody, open your mouth. You are God. And there is nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Your God. Come on, y'all singing now. You are God. There is nobody like you, Jesus. 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 Like you, Jesus. Like you, Jesus. Your God. Come on, lift your voice up and sing it. You are God. There is nobody. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. You are God. You're the one that made heaven and earth. You're the one that healed the sick man. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Come on, somebody shout it out. Your God. Everybody say your God. I've seen you with my own eyes. And nobody like you, Jesus. 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 Your God. When the doctor said we wouldn't get well. In the midnight hour, there is nobody. 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 Nobody like you, Jesus. You are God. You're the one that's going to transform us today. We never will be the same. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. One more time. You are God. There is nobody. Your God. Yes, Lord. There is nobody. Come on, 
on, let's give it to him and take it up. Come on. You are God. You're God. There is nobody like you. I've searched all over. I've searched all over. I've searched all over. And I found out Nobody like you, Jesus Nobody like you, Jesus Nobody like you, Jesus You're gone Woo! Can anybody in here think about anything? that Jesus did that couldn't nobody else do. Your God, you are God. There is nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. I searched all over and I couldn't find nobody. That's why you God. Because I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. That's why you gone. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. That's why he's gone. He can do anything but fail. He can do anything but fail. Nobody. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. You're You may be seated in the presence of my Jesus. Because he's God. And there is nobody else like him. I know that the day is far spent and I won't <clears throat> promise you I won't be before you long. I just want to talk about something briefly. When I was, thank you so much, thank you. When I received the phone call on last week to be a part of something that I considered in prayer to be non-foolishness and sensitivity to what the timing and the plan of God is for this hour. I knew it was something that the Lord was be preparing me for because he had summoned me to sleep in my prayer room for four months. So when I got the phone call, I knew by way of one word that the Lord spoke to me and he said, the day of transformation. The day of transformation. And you cannot possibly think that all of the women in this building have the same issues or circumstances because we are, we have different thumbprints, therefore none of us are identical. But yet, we are grouped in this building in stages and departments of the kingdom. 
You are part of a department of the kingdom. And I make this statement all the time, and sometimes it gets misconstrued because I think I make it with such a conviction in my heart that people sometimes find it difficult for, to digest it. When I say that I quit the church and I join the kingdom. See, when I make a statement like that, I'm just looking for the people that I'm looking for. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about the church of the bride of Christ. I'm talking about the mess church. I quit the mess church and I join the kingdom. And now that I've joined the kingdom, I don't want to be confused about what department I'm supposed to be working in. I don't want to be found doing another man's job. And I don't want anybody to be found doing what God has called me to do. And so now that I have stopped all the foolishness, I just want to know what is the divine instructions because there's got to be more to God calling me than paying a light bill and a gas bill and paying my rent. I'm not hearing nobody. I'm just trying to see who I'm trying to talk to. I want to see who is it that got their patent of the boots on and want God to prostitute you because it ain't about bills right now. It's about dimensions. It's about revelation. It's about positions. It's about departments. It's about knowing that I was placed on this earth with an assignment and I'm not going to be found operating in the power of God for a phone bill and a light bill and a gas bill there's a worldwide call on my life if you in this building tonight ain't nothing small about you if you in this building today the reason why the devil have been chasing you not because y'all ain't hearing me not because you in warfare but because what's in your belly because the enemy is afraid that if you ever find out who you are you're going to tear his kingdom down I just came to see who I came to preach to because I didn't come to preach to everybody I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me because some of us is starstruck I came for the Jesus people I came for the people that saying I got to get in the divine will of God I got to oh my God stop playing games with myself I've got to have the power of God that goes beyond my church I got to have the kind of God that operates in my basement in my kitchen where I have to pour my cargo on the side of the road because I'm having a visitation a visitation so they tell me to according to the scripture to look to the hills from which cometh my help and they say I have been told that my help cometh from the Lord but for some reason there has been a gulf between me and my Lord. I have to go through so, so much other stuff. And then I have to end up settling for the Lord that people give me. And I never meet the Lord himself. I'm not here nobody. See, I met the real Jesus, the real one. I met the real Jesus, the one that make you not care whether or not you invited or not, the one that make you not care what people say, the one that make you, I'm not here nobody, the one that make you satisfied by just being in his presence, the one that makes you grateful that he showed up in your bedroom, the one that, the one that makes you grateful that when you lift up your hands, you recognize that you still belong to him. Mama, I don't need a title. You can call me Juanita because the thing that had happened to me I've got my real title back it's called servant it's called child of God I'm not giving nobody to 
It's called woman of God because I'm a woman and I walk with God and I walk with God and I walk with God. Anybody want to go back to your original call and just start hollering because some of us done got messed up with what you've been called. But I'm here to tell you what God called you. He called you a handmaiden. He called you a servant. Hey, watch this because, because it wasn't, you know, sit, sit down, sit down. Sit down, let me, let me just, y'all don't take me too fast, sit down. Because see, Naaman, let me help somebody, Naaman didn't get healed because of the prophet. Naaman got healed because of a servant that was in the house that knew where God was. I'm not hearing y'all because see I'm here to talk to somebody that feels like you don't know what I'm going through because I'm in captivity honey the reason why you in captivity let me help you with something don't take it personal it's business it's kingdom business you are in I'm not hearing y'all you are in a trap because there's somebody in you why you a slave that God gonna use you to bring them into the face of Jesus and they're going to be killed who am I preaching to we too busy trying to get out that we miss it the whole experience, the experience of, is to bring you into the realm of the supernatural without a title. Yeah. Huh. Wait, 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 wait. Sit down. 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 Sit Ureka suriasha, soria manian sore, sorebeke, ora manamonian sia, ona masaya. After this day, no eyes have seen the spirit of God just said. My God, I'm looking for somebody that's got the new heart that can respond to God. He said, after this day in your life, I don't care if you're watching the internet. He said, no eyes have seen the reason why you ain't got nobody to prophesy to you. Because I said the next thing that I'm about to do for you, ain't nobody seen it. Ain't nobody heard. You better come over here and shout. You better give him a shout because something is shifting in your mind, in your life, in your family now. Holy oh, shit. Now, now, now. No. So he. Wait. Wait, wait. Wait a minute. So let's. Can we. Can we go through the process? Sit down, sit down. Can we go through the process? Can we go through the process? Okay, sit down. Let me talk about, let me talk about the process because the first thing, the first thing that I, that I have to do, I have to, I have to meet the real Jesus and then I have to be introduced to the real Holy Ghost. Okay. Okay, I'm not hitting nobody. I, I, I just want somebody to understand what I just said. Because the Bible talked about, in the book of Ezekiel, he said, as a prophet, the Lord calls the messenger to take me up in the realm of the spirit. Yeah, yeah. Take me up in the realm of the spirit. And he showed me water coming, not from the preacher. Not, not, not from Prophet's Bible, not from my favorite evangelist. <laughs> But I saw water coming from under the doorpost of the sanctuary of the Lord. Remember him? I'm like, no, God. Why are we trying to make stars out of the preachers? Remember God? Remember Jesus? Uh -huh. That's where the power of the supernatural comes from. It comes from the tabernacle of the Lord. It comes when somebody gets on their face and provoke God to ooze the water from underneath the doorpost one more time. So it can flow down in me to make me rivers of living. Rivers of, rivers of living water. It's 
scripture say? The scripture said, the scripture said, and these, we looking for the supernatural. We said, I just want the Lord to do it in the supernatural. Supernatural said, and these supernatural qualities. My God, my God. The stuff that you need God to do that can't nobody do from God. It, it, it ain't gonna come from shouting in church. No, no. We come to church to shout because we shouting in victory. Y'all come on here. Come on here, somebody. Come on. It's going to come when you stick your ears to the lips of Jesus. And the minute you get a word from him, it is the responsibility of the supernatural power of God to come and confirm his word by making it manifest. Y'all don't understand. The reason why you're still here is because you got a problem. The reason why you're still here is because there's a word from God in your belly. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. Heaven and earth may pass away, but his word shall fall. Now, I'm a, let me hear this. 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 Me hear this. Sit down, because y'all, I, I got to say this. Help your neighbor. Just tell your neighbor, just sit down for five Second, you don't want to go back to your seat, sit down right there in the aisle. Just, just, just sit down right where you are. We all right. It ain't nothing but the flow. It ain't, it ain't nothing but where we gonna end up anyway. Oh, y'all, come on, somebody. Whoa, transformation. 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 Which means my dance ain't gonna be the same when I leave here. Transformation. I'm going to turn in the church tongues that I copy and I'm going to get the real baptism of the Holy Ghost. The one that speaks on the inside of me. The one that calls y'all and giving me. The one that causes me to respond to God even when I don't see my way. The one that causes me to still have a praise even though everybody thinks I should give up. The one that keeps me standing. The real, the real, the real Holy Ghost. The real Holy Ghost. The one that don't find the one. Come. The one that don't play games. So he said, he said, he said, watch it. He said, he said, it's going to flow from the sanctuary of the Lord. Which means after tonight, it don't matter if the praise team show up. Because on my way to church, y'all ain't saying nothing. While I'm still in the shower. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. You can make a walk with some more you that you're going to be looking at the praise team like, I don't need y'all today because I got my own praise on. Oh, come on, somebody. I already took myself into the holies of holies. And so what God called me to do in church today is to pray y'all through. I'm not giving nobody because there's a power that's about to get the pews up. There's an anointing up that's about to get the nation. There's all oh, y'all. Come on. There's a radical shift that's about to take place. And God is getting ready to give power to the common man. To the, wait a minute. Wait a minute. To the con, I'm a, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, I'm finna say something. I'm finna say something. I'm finna say something. Turn around if you bold enough and tell your neighbor you don't know who you standing next to. You don't know me. You don't know me because you don't know the hell that I've been through. Somebody about somebody. You don't know what God is about to use in my life to accomplish. So we got to. Sit down for a second so we got to. Let's get organized. Brother, Brother Coco and Sister Joanne said, we organize for the next move. Okay, let's get organized. Sit down, let's find out where we at, all right? Y'all, because I'm just giving you what my Jesus gave me. I was praying for a word all week. And one hour before I came here, he said, this is it right here. 
He said, because I don't want you to have a chance to study it all hard and put your two cents in it. I want you to give it to him like I gave it to you. He said, can y'all, can y'all, can y'all help me? Because y'all not helping me. Sit down for a second. Just help me because I got to. Uh, he said, he said, you got to find the categories for transformation. So then you got to determine that if there's going to be a transformation then Jesus must be present I'm not hearing y'all talk somebody better talk back to me he is the master of transfiguration and if transfiguration is going to take place the master that knows how to get it done must be present so the first thing you got to do is recognize Jesus the first thing we got to do is start praising God for Jesus not for prophet is by them not for a person but open up your mouth and begin to say thank God for Jesus that's what the old people used to say Watch this, watch this. Did you see how weak, did you see how weak it was when I said, thank God for Jesus? Did you see how weak it was when you said, thank God for Jesus? Jesus. Jesus. Y'all ain't here, Jesus. Oh, that's the one who went here, Jesus. That's the one that's going up and down the aisles right now. Jesus. I don't go so, oh, not really to bite him, Jesus. Not who's in the room, Jesus. And wow, he's passing you, but I'm not here, y'all. You better reach out because Jesus, he's in the bed. Oh my God, who am I preaching to? Who am I preaching to? Jesus. Wait, so, so he said, so he said, Jesus brought you into this auditorium. I, Jesus, caused you to hit your laptop and plug in because when I come to town, I come to heal somebody. Y'all ain't hear me. I come to deliver somebody. I come to set somebody free. So in other words, Watch this, watch this. Let me ask a simple question. So you gotta hear simple, simple, simple answers. They're not difficult answers. If you can feel the presence of the Lord, just raise your hand. If you can feel the presence of the Lord, raise your hand. Okay, come on, let's confirm what's going on. It is illegal for the Spirit of God to touch anybody without a word preceding it. So if you feel the presence of God, it's because the spirit now comes to confirm that the word that's been spoken over your life is still alive. I'm not kidding about, no matter what you've been through, it's still alive. Wait a minute, the Holy Ghost ain't touching you to make you feel better. It ain't touching you to give you a shout. It's touching you to confirm to you. You cannot give up. You cannot quit. You cannot throw in the towel because my presence is confirming that my world is still alive. So what has to happen? So what has to happen? First category of transformation. I just need 10 minutes. First category. Can y'all sit down for a minute? Cause I gotta walk through here. Cause there's some people I need to look at. Like this baby right here. Behind the black. Jesus sent me here for you. I know it. I see it. I see it. Can she have that seat? Can she have your seat? Baby, come sit with me. Jesus sent me here for you. All right? Sit down. It's already all right. Because I came for you. And I'm going to tell you why. I came for you. Because you fit a category. First category of transfiguration is Jesus got a message. And the message was Jairus' daughter was dead dead in my spirit and been through so much prophetess I don't even know 
if I want to live or die some days. So what causes movement in the spirit from Jesus, the reason why he's moving in the building today, because we got some dead women. And he's been commissioned to come and bring resurrection to somebody in this building. Y'all better come over here and open up your mouth. I said the first thing he got to do is raise the dead. Are y'all hearing me? Listen, what's causing him to get into movement is because somebody is dead in their spirit. Somebody is dead in their prayer life. Somebody is dead in their past in life. Somebody done gave up hope on their family. Somebody done, wait a minute, you got your hands up, but you done threw in the towel alone time ago so 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 sit down and if you're gonna be honest if you're gonna be honest if 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 I'm talking about about you Jairus's daughter don't be shame don't be shame don't be shame because the minute your hand go up Jesus is coming in your direction not, not, uh, Prophetess, I'm Jairus' daughter. I'm something, something died in my life, in my ministry, in my prayer life. Okay. All right, got you. So he's on his way. And while he's on his way to heal a girl that was 12 years old, he's walking. <laughs> and while he's walking, He's on his way to heal a girl that's 12 years old and some woman that's got issues for 12 long years reaches out and grabs the hem of his garment while he on his way to raise the dead. Y'all ain't hearing me. I wish somebody would hear me. I wish somebody would hear me. I wish somebody would hear what God is saying. While he's moving, if you got issues, you got to reach out now. Oh, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, well, watch this. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said, watch this. They touch the hem of his garment. She touched the hem of his garment. Well, what does it got to do with us today? What does it got to do with what Coco Brother did today? What does it got to do with what's going on in here? And is this just a powerful thing? Is this just something God is doing? That ain't what my Jesus said to me. That ain't what my Jesus said to me. He said, you better look at this thing in the prophetic. He said, the little girl was 12 years old. The woman with the issue had it for 12 years. He said, this is 2012. So you can sit here and act like this ain't your year for transfiguration. Because it is. It is. It is. It's too late. The devil should have killed you last year. You shouldn't have never made it to 2012. It's too late. You better give God a shout. Somebody needs to shout. Because you in the year of your deliverance. You in the year of God's timing. Somebody give him a shout right now. Wait a minute, I'm gonna say it again. And it ain't me saying it. He said, this is the year that I dry up issues. See, y'all praising him like y'all in church. I want somebody to praise him like you in trouble. He said, come on here somebody. He said, this is the year, this is the year, this is the year, if they reach out in the spirit and touch Jesus, this will be the year that I'll, I'll deliver them from all of their issues because I'm calling. Wait, 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 what do you mean? Wait a minute. I just heard something in the Holy Ghost. I just heard something in the Holy Ghost. Woo! Baby, whatever you do, give it to him today. Give him a praise like you ain't never praised him before. Baby, whatever you do, 
Cause he said he joined it up. He joined up your issue today. Hold up, Ashanda. Whatever you do, whatever you do, give it to him. Cause you can't go no further. You can't take no more. You about to lose your mind. Who am I preaching to? You better shout because the dead is coming alive. Oh my God, my God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait. The woman. Transfiguration. So what I want us to do now. See, when, when, when I went to Africa, let me give you this little testimony. I went to Africa and I had a dream. And while I was in Africa, I dreamed this robe. And I woke up and I called the pastor. I said, do you know anybody in your church that's so? I said, because God showed me a dream. And I got the dream and I got the lady and I drew for her what God showed me. Not knowing that when I left there and went to London, England, Bishop John Francis gave me a book and all this time I would take my press shawl and wrap it around me. And when I began to read that book, it said that when Jesus got to the house at Oshundi, where the little girl was, he had to put everybody out. See, that's why some of y'all couldn't come with your friends. Uh -huh. That's why some of y'all, some of y'all had to leave some people behind. Because when it's time for you to get raised up, I'm not hearing nobody talk. He ain't talking to nobody but you. Uh, come on, you got to know when it's your turn. You got to know when it's your time. Watch this. He said, he said, he said, he said, I want you to make this robe. And when I read the book, and I went back to the scripture, the 12 year old it said Talitha Kumi, and Talitha, Talit, meaning prayer shawl. And in another translation of the message Bible, it says that Jesus said, she that is under the press shawl come back to life. He said, when you wear it, you will represent the body of Christ. And he said, and as you preach, he is commanding that everybody that was once dead to arise. He said, it is time to get up. It is time to get up. It is time to arise. The transfiguration is first. I'm going to raise from the dead. Watch this. I'm going to heal from issues. And when I get to healing from issues, let me tell you what the other two women are. Then the other group, Deborah called for Barack. Y'all play too much. Y'all play too much. That's why I told you it was more than one group of women in here. Deborah called. Wait a minute, let me sit down because I got to find out who the Debra's is. And I gotta find out who done transition that quick from being dead, from having issues, to say, wait a minute, I'm getting ready to step into the prophetic call of God that's on my life. I'm not getting ready to feel sorry for myself. I'm not getting ready. I'm not getting ready to live in nobody else's comments about me. I'm not getting ready to live in nobody else's spirit about me. I'm not getting ready to live in nobody else's opinion about me. Wait a minute, wait. Cause see, let me help you do that. When I was going through my transition, people used to walk up to me in the mall and say, I'm praying for you. I said, I'm praying for you. They said, but no prophets, I'm really praying for you. I said, but I'm really praying for you. And they said, well, are you all right? I said, are you all right for asking me, am I all right? I said, because guess what? I'm an experience from God. I'm the one that God is going to use that he can let you drop down to the bottom with nothing. And because he got a promise in you, he'll raise you back up without anybody's permission. I'm not here. Oh, y'all got the wrong one. You got the wrong one. Ain't no pity party here. I came to set the captive free. I can set you free from a demon that I killed myself. He said, I just wish I had somebody to go to. I just wish I had somebody. You ain't, listen, you can't cast the devil out that you ain't never confronted. You can't bind an enemy that still got you. I'm not giving nobody. 
That's it. It's that devil said. Okay, sit down, because you got to sit down for this. I got four minutes. You got to sit down for this. Because you got to take yourself through the stages now. You got to take yourself through the stages. You got to say dead and then start praising God, which means I ain't dead no more. Uh huh. Then you got to say issues. You got to start praising God and say, I done gave him my issues. Oh, Shandobo say it. Y'all don't believe me. Y'all don't believe that by this time tomorrow. But no, 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 no. You don't, you don't believe me that by this time tomorrow, you're going to start seeing circumstances and situations change up because something is happening. A transfiguration is taking place. The situation may be the same, but you ain't going to be the same. And because you're not going to be able to be, you're going to be able to speak those things which be not as though they were. You are about to shut the enemy down. Yeah. Wait. Wait. Three minutes. Three minutes. Sit down so I can give you this illustration. Sit down. Let me give you this illustration because you got you to stand up in it. You got to stand up in it. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Got to stand up in it. Dead. Dead. That ain't me no more. Caught up in all the dumbness, that ain't me no more. Caught up in church games, dead, gone. Mm -mm. Resurrected. Resurrected. Not because my cousin did it. Resurrected because Jesus called me forth. Y'all hear me. The reason why you in this building is because the word called you forth. You don't understand every, listen, all of your existence. That's why y'all ain't got to be tripping because guess what? Whatever the devil is doing, he can't keep doing it because you've been called forth by Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? When he called Lazarus' name, I don't care how many devils was in the pit of hell. I don't care about the grave clothes and nothing else. I didn't care about the flesh. When Lazarus heard Jesus call his name, he got up and he came forth. Why you sitting right here talking about grave clothes? Why you sitting right here to all y'all? See, the problem is you hang out with too many people that's going through what you're going through. God said it's time out for rehearsing your issue. It's time to be delivered. So then he says, I got two minutes. Two minutes, sit down. You got to get up in this one. How bullshit. She called Barak, and she was a prophet. And she said, Brother Corey just said, there's a war going on. <laughs> she called Barak, and she said, I have a word for you from the Lord. <laughs> Can I just be Deborah for a second? I have a word for you from the Lord. And the word of the Lord is saying, watch this now, the word of the Lord is saying, I'm going to give the battle into your hands, but you got a charge today. No, y'all didn't hear me. No. See, 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 that just canceled out the, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus, Lord, I love you. Wait, 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 wait. That just canceled out the sloppy agape. No. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. If you're going to embrace the spirit of Deborah, the Bible said she went to Barak and said, listen, listen, the battle is already yours. You already got the victory. But God is saying charge today, which means open up your mouth now. Because what we do in the spirit realm, if you're watching by internet, God said charge today. I don't care who in your house. You better start hollering. Charge. Which means I'm not waiting on the devil to chase me. I'm chasing the enemy. Charge! Shut! Charge! Listen to me very quickly. I declare the protection of God upon you right now. I cover you with the blood of Jesus right now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Every car, I bind every spirit of accident. 
And I charge you in the spirit, when you get home or when you get in the car, don't turn on your television, don't get on the phone and start talking foolishness. Do not get entangled in gossip and conversations that are not appropriate. Anything, the enemy will try to come and steal the seed that God has planted in all of us today. But we have a responsibility to guard, to guard, to guard the seed and the life that God has placed in our spiritual womb. Do you hear me today? So in the name of Jesus, I bless you and I cover you. I cover you in the name, by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and I declare that every word that God has 